All right, guys, welcome back to Mets Central. This is Mets Fan Reaction Game 98, where the New York Mets dropped the third game of this four-game set against the Miami Marlins by a score of 4-2. to two. And listen, before we get into this game recap, I just want to, you know, say, make sure you guys drop a like and subscribe. Be, you know, be greatly appreciated on the channel. You know, we, you know, we appreciate all the views that we get for this channel and all the support we get. So, yeah, if you guys could just do that, that'd be greatly appreciated. But before we get into this game recap, I just want to take you guys back, you know, to about a week, a week or two ago, where I think on the last, on the most recent homestand, or the second to most recent homestand, where Brendan Immel was getting um, interviewed by Steve Gelbs on the on the city at at City Field after one of the Mets wins, and you know he was asking Nimmo questions about you know potentially uh, the rest of the season, you know what the Mets what the Mets might do in terms of you know buying at the deadline, selling, you know, whether they think they have a good shot making the playoffs. And Brandon Nimmo basically came out and he basically had a message to Steve um, Steve Cohen and uh, David Stearns. And he said that they want them to buy. And listen, Brandon, I, I greatly appreciate you because after a, a tough start to the season, you've you've greatly rebounded and you've had a really good last couple of months. And, you know, you're one of the, the leaders on the team, you know, one of the co-captains along with Lindor. But I'm sorry, like, if the Mets are going to, you know, play poorly, like, right now heading into the All-Star break, and they're going to, you know, drop these series against, you know, these poor teams like like the Marlins and, you know, not being able to sweep a team like the Rockies, then I think David Sturge might have to rethink the whole idea of, you know, just going all in and buying at the deadline because, listen, the, the Mets are at an interesting point where it's like, are they, are they a World Series team right now? No. With the right additions, could they make a run like we saw with the Diamondbacks, like, last year? or with the Phillies two years ago where they made it to the wild card. Yeah, we could, but I still think, you know, this Mets team is it's, it's still not there. You know, we'll see what they do, but I don't know. David Stern's going to have an interesting have an inter interesting time at this trade deadline, you know, whether, you know, to buy, whether to sell, whether to buy and sell at the same time. It's going to be interesting, but, I mean, look, like going back, you know, you had that series against the Rockies, right, where the Mets took the first two games right, then they dropped the third game where they really should have swept the Rockies, and you had that poor pitching performance by Jose Quintana, at which and they dropped that third game, which didn't allow them to sweep. Then you head into the All Star break where you know you, you allow the team to reset and you know start the bulk up for the for the second half of the season, and then you know you have this four game series to Marlins where listen, no disrespect to the Marlins, but the Mets are a much better team than the Marlins, right? And listen, you should never underestimate your opponent. Like, no matter how good you of a team you are, and no matter how bad of a team like you're facing, you never underestimate your opponent because once that happens, and we've seen it all throughout sports history, once you underestimate your opponent, like it's 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 not gonna look good for you because you know you underestimate them, you piss them off, and then and then they come at you because it's like they have a point to prove, and it's it's not good enough dropping the first two games of this of this four game series against the Marlins. And listen now. The Mets got to find a way to salvage this series because if they drop, you know, this series three to one against the Marlins, and then you know, then after you know, you're heading to the Bronx where you face the Yankees for two games, where you know, af after the Mets beat beat the Yankees, you know, very convincingly in those two games at City Field, you know, the Yankees are gonna want some revenge on the um on the Mets. So, listen, I I, I hope they find a way to salvage this series tomorrow, but the play recently has not been good, and it's it's got to improve, but. Anyway, let's let's get into this post game recap. Um, obviously, it was, we had Christian Scott on the mound today for the New York Mets, and Tanner Scott was on the mound today for the Miami Marlins. But anyway, top of the first, Francisco Lindor would lead off. He would ground out to Otto Lopez at short. Brandon Nimmo then walk. JD Martinez, who has struggled very mightily recently, and I mean, listen, JD Martinez had that very hot start, you know, to the season when he came when he came up, you know, after you know missing the first month or so because he signed late. And he was playing well, but recently he's just been he's just been off his game. And listen, I, I hope this is just a little skid from him, and that you know we'll see him back to his best eventually. But he's got to start to pick it up again because his play right now has not been good. Brandon Nimmo then still second. Pete Alonso, another guy who's struggling, he would fly out to um to uh, Brian De La Cruz in left field. And listen, this is another guy, uh, Pete Alonso, right? Listen, he's supposed to be one of the leaders on the team, right? He is, and. Listen, this is his contract year, right? And he is not performing well at all. So I mean, it's it's not looking good for him in terms of you know potentially resigning with the Mets and getting a big time contract. Listen, I understand he, you know, he signed up with Scott Boris this offseason and hopes getting a big time contract. But if he's gonna keep, you know, having this poor season, then I don't see a team, you know, you know, getting all from a big time contract because he's just not playing well at 
all this year. Listen, I hope he turns around. There's still plenty of time to do that, but if he's going to do it, it has to be soon. But anyway, moving on to the bottom of the first, Jazz, uh, Jazz Chisholm with get a leadoff single. Brian De La Cruz would then uh, fly out to Tyrone Taylor on the right. Josh Bell would fly out to Brandon Nimmo on the left, and Christian Scott would get Jake Berger to strike out. Then moving on to the top of the second, Mark Fientos would get a single. Luis Torrens would strike out. Jose Iglesias would fly out to um, Jesus uh, Sanchez in center. And then Tyrone Taylor would strike out to end the inning. Then moving on to the bottom of the second, um, Jesus Sanchez would line out to Brandon Nemo and right. Otto Lopez would strike out. Xavier Edwards would get a single. Uh, Vital, uh, Vital Bruhan would uh, would then get a single. So first and second for the Marlins. Thankfully, Christian Scott would not allow anything anything in that inning as he would get Nick Cortez to fly out to um, Tyrone Taylor and right. Then top of the third, quick inning for Tanner Scott as he'd get Bader to fly out to center. Uh, Francisco Lindor would ground out to Jake Berger at third, and then Brandon Emma would be called out on strikes. Then moving on to the bottom of the third, Jazz Chisholm would uh, fly out to Tyrone Taylor and right. Brian De La Cruz would get a single. Josh Bell would walk, so we'd have first and second with uh, one out. Then um, Jake Berger would then walk, so bases loaded. Top spot for, for Christian Scott, but he'd bowl, he'd bowl down and he'd get out of the inning as he'd get Jesus Sanchez to strike out and he'd get Otto Lopez to pop out to Pete Alonso at first base. Then moving on to the top of the fourth, J.D. Martinez would fly out to Brian De La Cruz. Pete Alonso would get a single. Mark Fientos would then get a single. So first and second for the Mets. Um, then an attempt to pick off play from the Marlins as on that pickoff play, it, it would hit Mark Vientos. And it would allow Pete Alonso to get the third base. Um, it, it the pickoff temp the pickoff attempt um, hit Mark Vientos, but thankfully he was all right. He would stay in the game and continue. Then on a sacrifice fly, the Mets would bring in the first one of the game as Luis Torrens would hit a sacrifice fly, so Pete Alonso would score. Jose Iglesias would then get a single, first and second, uh, first and second for the Mets with two outs. They wouldn't get anything else going that inning as Tyrone Taylor would ground uh, would ground out to Otto Lopez at short. Then moving on to the bottom of the fourth, Xavier Edwards would single. Vital Bruhan would then get a single. Nick Fortes would uh, get a sacrifice bunt. So second and third for the Mons with the one out. And then a big problem for Christian Scott, which has, you know, <clears throat> not only, you know, hampered his time in the, in the majors so far, but also was a bit of a problem for him in the minors, it was, is the home run ball. And he would give up a three-run home run to Jazz Chisholm. And, look, I, I get a lot of people right now are on Christian Scott's case and saying, you know, he's not major league ready yet and all this stuff. You know, he's giving up the home runs. Listen, I get it. He's given up home runs. Uh, he's given up a lot of home runs right now when he's starting. Right, I think, I think he's given up seven home runs in his first nine outings so far, which, which is not great. Listen, I, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's it's not great. Like, and, and he has to get that under control. But listen, he's a rookie, and I trust I trust in his ability. I trust in his stuff. And <clears throat> listen, you gotta, you just gotta, you know, play him through those struggles. And listen, I think eventually he will he will work it out. But it it has been a problem for him so far. But then after that, uh, Brian De La Cruz will fly out to Bader in center, and Chris Scott will get Josh Bell to strike out. So 3-1 Marlins after the fourth inning. Then move on to the top of the fifth. Um, Harrison Bader would reach um, would reach uh, would reach base on an error. Francisco Lindor would strike out. Brandon Nimmo would walk. J.D. Martinez would again a single, so he would cut the um, the Marlins lead down to three to two. And then Pete Alonso would ground out. Would ground into a force out. Uh, Declan Declan Cronin would replace Trevor Rogers, and then Mark Vientos would strike out to end the inning. Then moving on to the bottom of the fifth, Adrian Hauser would then come in to replace Christian Scott. Um, he'd get Jake Berger to strike out. Jesus Sanchez would then ground out, and Otto Lopez would then ground out to uh, Adrian Hauser. Then moving on to the top of the sixth, Luis Torrens would strike out. Jose Iglesias would get a single. Tyrone Taylor would strike out, and then Harrison Bader would ground out. Uh, bottom of the sixth, Xavier Edwards would would ground out Jose Iglesias at second. Um, Vidal Bruhan would then double. Nick Fortes would walk. Vidal Bruhan would then steal third base. And then Jazz Chisholm would ground into a double play to end the inning. So <coughs> Adrian Hauser was able to get out of that inning. Then moving on to the top of the seventh, pitching change for the Marlins is A.J. Pook would come in for Declan Cronin. Francisco Lindor would single to get the inning started. Brandon Nimmo would then strike out on a foul tip. J.D. Mar JD Martinez would then strike out. <coughs> then there will be a balk. There would, there would then be a balk and then a throwing error by um, Nick Fortes at the catcher, but Mets wouldn't get anything going that inning as P. 
Pete Alonso would ground out in the inning. Then uh, bottom of the seventh, Brian De La Cruz would ground out to to Viento the third. Josh Bell would strike out, and then Adrian Hauser acting like Adrian Hauser again. He go up a home run as Jake Berger would hit a solo home run to make it four to two. Jake Diekman, which we all love, he would come in to replace Adrian Hauser. So uh, you're replacing ass for ass right there. Um, he'd hit. Um, he would then hit Hazel Sanchez with the pitch. He'd go to first. No damage done there, though, as he'd get out of Lopez to strike out. Then moving at the top of the eighth, um, Calvin Foucher would replace AJ Pupe. Uh, Mark Fiences would strike out. DJ Stewart would then um, would hit a line drive to Brian De La Cruz. He came in and, and as, as uh, DJ Stewart pinched it for a Luis Torrens. Jose Iglesias would then ground out into a force out. Jeff McNeil will come to the game as he would pinch it for Tyrone Taylor, and Jeff McNeil would strike out the end the inning. Then moving up to the bottom of the eighth, um, Xavier Edwards would walk. Uh, Vital Bruhan would would um, fly out to left where Brandon Immo would catch the ball, and then Nick Fortes would pop out to Pete Alonso at first base. Then moving on to the top of the ninth, Tanner Scott um, would come in to replace Calvin Foucher and a pretty simple one, two, three inning for Tanner Scott as he'd get Harrison Bayer to strike out, Francisco Lindor would fly out to center field, and then Brandon Nimmo would strike out to end the game. So, yeah, just just a poor offensive showing for the Mets. I mean, listen, I, I get it that Christian Scott gave up the the thrown home run and Adrian Hauser gave up the home run to Jake Berger, but – this loss wasn't on the pitching at all. And the offense against, you know, like I said before, not a great Marlins team and not a great rotation by them. And you're only able to, you know, muster up a total of, of two runs and you can't, you know, drive in guys on base. Listen, like I said before, the performances of lately have not been good enough. And the Mets got to quickly turn this around because, like I said, you got that two games against the Yankees and they got to find a way to win tomorrow. They really have to because you cannot drop, you cannot lose this series three to one to the Mons. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoy the um this post game recap. Like I said before at the start of the video, make sure you guys like and subscribe, and uh, we'll see you guys next time.